The views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of any major corporation whatsoever. So, I was eating pizza during the break and I was thinking about this. Did you know that Google has a patent for a type of pizza box, a delivery box for pizza that is round and has a ventilation system that both stops condensation and keeps the heat inside so that the pizza stays fresher longer. Yeah, they have a revolutionary um, patent on a specific type of pizza box that you can only get if you go to like a Google campus and you order a pizza to go. And it's the only way you can get your hands on this revolutionary pizza box design. So then I'm thinking like, why then do we still have these lame square pizza boxes? There's only one answer that I can think of. Big cardboard. Big cardboard has a financial interest in keeping our pizza shitty. <laughs> Big cardboard. You got to follow the money. Say that's that's always the answer. Just follow the money. That's that's right. And that's I think you're true. really on to something there. Yeah. Big cardboard is keeping our pizzas crappy. Mm-hmm. It's as simple as that. Well, Bunny, this week on the Popon Film Podcast, we are doing a Marvel movie. Yes, we are. And it is not just any Marvel movie. No, no, my friend. This is literally the newest Marvel movie. It is the and it is the sixth movie that this character has starred in. Uh It is a reboot, a reboot of a legendary character, of course, a legendary character that everybody loves. I am talking, of course, about Hawkeye. Yes. Oh, once again, they're rebooting Hawkeye. Mm -hmm. Man, what is this, like the third Hawkeye? I still, I still remember growing up in, hmm. At least third. And, and we still yeah. have yet to see the purple outfit. Yep, we still have yet to see the purple outfit. Huh. I uh, remember I, I grew up in the 80s, born in the 70s, grew up in the 80s. I still remember the uh, 80s cartoon Hawkeye and his amazing buddy pals. Yes. It was Hawkeye, Black Widow, and the snow fella. The snow fella. <laughs> yeah, the snow fella guy. Uh-huh. All right, it's the snow fella guy, buddy, pal. Good show. Of course, before that cartoon, there was the legendary 1960s cartoon with that oh-so-catchy theme song. Hawkeye, Hawkeye, does whatever Hawkeye does. <laughs> can he shoot an arrow? Yes, he can. In fact, that's all that he does. He shoots arrows good. <laughs> at, in the chill of the night, at the scene of the crime, Hawkeye eventually shows up. At the speed of a normal guy. <laughs> okay. Okay. Regular guy. He shoots arrows. Uh, so they've made three. They made three Hawkeye movies originally. Of course, those ones were legendary and they starred Elijah Wood. Uh, three of them, but by Hawkeye three, the film was really was really reaching. Uh, in fact, the scene where he walks down the street dancing to the song "Push It" is now like a meme. It's so bad. Oh yeah, yeah. So they waited a few years and then they rebooted the franchise with their new star, Andrew Gazorpazorpfield. Yes. You know, it's interesting that 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 his name, the last name, is is shared. 
by um, the beloved uh, cartoon character and uh, comic strip character, Gazorpazorp Field. Uh-huh. Yeah. Did, John didn't he play Mr. Mr. Fantastic in Fantastic Four? Andrew Gazorpazorp Field? Yeah. You mean the new one? No, the original. The new? Oh, the original? No, I th- think the original. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> But then the the second film, the second film cost two hundred and fifty million dollars. Uh-huh. And then it made well over seven million dollars. But then one critic said, eh, I don't like it. And Sony said, Oh crap, let's immediately reboot this. <laughs> so they actually killed Andrew Gazorpa's field. They put him down and yeah. they found a new young British waif to torture with CGI and uh, rope work. And that is this week's film, the 2017 reboot of a reboot, Uh Spider-Man Homecoming. Yes. And right off the bat, like, like, did you like this? I liked it. I liked it. It was fun. It was cute. Yeah, I liked it too. And I also thought that it was fun. And that it was cute. And before we get knuckles deep into this shit, let's take a wee refresher course as to exactly why we have gone from a beautiful, disturbing art film that features angry potato Jesus yelling at mannequins <laughs> to one of the biggest hits of the summer. Just want to be clear about this. Yes. I have a concept going on here. I, I started burping in the middle of concept. Uh-huh. But I powered through it. I have a concept here. This week is but a step, but week one, step one, of an entire month of big, popular, dumb, stupid, major Hollywood, dumb, stupid, fun, little movies that we won't have to freaking think about. Yeah. At all. Yeah, yeah, at all. Just fun, just fun, dumb, stupid stuff. Or maybe just dumb and stupid for next week. I'm calling it the November Palette Cleanser. Yeah. And let's just talk once again about why oh, Bunny, uh, last month we celebrated Bunnoween. It is your birthday month. So you picked all the movies uh, last month in October and you said, oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to challenge the shit out of everybody. <laughs> Now, I'm not in any way uh, bad-mouthing Bunnoween. I had fun. Last week's movie was fucking amazing. But uh, we watched some pretty archaic films, and so now we're trying to cancel that out with some good old-fashioned mindless entertainment. Yes. And we're beginning with Spider-Man uh, finally entering the Marvel Universe. Uh, so, so, so last month we watched... Um, Women getting tortured and killed. Yes. And then we watched. Oh, uh, uh, God disemboweling himself and then giving the mother earth who then raped God, God's dead corpse. And then we watched. um, uh, Oh, shit. What's his name? I just blanked out. Chris McGlover. Yes, uh, Hitler Crispin Glover uh-huh. and his Down Syndrome friends killing snails. And then one of the most beautiful and stupid films of all time. <laughs> Which I hated so much that I loved it. Yes. But would have been better if George Harrison wasn't being all uh, lame about showing his asshole being cleaned. Mm-hmm. So now the, now we're cleansing the palette with just freaking Spider-Man Homecoming. Just Spider-Man Homecoming is fun. It's good. It's a, a reboot of a reboot. And you don't have to think too hard about it. And I like that. There are a few things that are great things that I think this film does. This film does a few great things. Number one, Peter Parker is in high school. Yes. Very I love so. that. In in the other movies, 
like like f- fucking Toby Maguire. What he was in high school for the first ten minutes of that movie. Yeah, the first fifteen minutes of the film, and then he's living on in New York and getting jobs and yada yada yada. So so that really didn't count. The second film with uh, um, a- Andrew Snoopy. Uh huh. Andrew Bill the Cat. I all I know is that his last name is the name of a famous uh, comic strip character. I'll get it right eventually. <laughs> um, Andrew Snoopy. The first film he was in high school, sure, and then he graduated in the beginning of the second film. But still, it's a twenty-nine-year-old dude. Yeah, pretending to be a high school student. But this film really does feel like, oh, crap, we haven't really seen this. It's him in high school uh-huh. and dealing with high school shit. And I love that. And it feels so different. Uh-huh. You know, and the thing that I really like about this is that. At times, it the, watching this film, it feels like. They got John Hughes to make a superhero movie. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. Yeah, that that's how a lot of this feels. Mm-hmm. This is the this is Marvel's The Breakfast Club. <laughs> yeah, so he like had a good to... relationship with his friend, and uh, and a very believable relationship with his friend. Mm-hmm. You know, and their own little secret handshake. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it, and so it, much of it was. It felt John Hughes. It felt high school. Yeah. If yeah, it it was nice to see a young, realistic Spider-Man. Because sure, you can give Tobey Maguire books in a locker, but that doesn't change the fact that he's a twenty-five-year-old man. Yeah. Yeah. Thor doesn't so go home like, and build a Lego Death Star. Yeah. And also that's like the biggest Lego set that they make and it's really complicated. So I told I told all the kids, I told the entire family that one of the most amazing parts of this film is watching uh Ned drop a Lego Death Star on the floor. Yes. Like you have no idea how many pieces that is, how expensive it is, how long it takes. That is an amazing shot. <laughs> Another amazing thing is that this being a Hollywood movie, how many Lego Death Stars did they have? Yeah. Whose job was it to build the Lego Death Stars for this film? <laughs> he must have hired people to build Lego Death Stars for this film. Because there's no way they're going to get that in just one take, you know? They probably had like five or ten Lego Death Stars on set blows my mind take forever just to get that set up so that's one good thing i like about this film number two i love the they do a great job in this film showing how normal people deal with life in a superhero world yes because in all of the other marvel movies um you're basically seeing life in a superhero world from the point of view of other major superheroes. Yes. Uh Uh-huh. True. But now here's what it's like to live in New York after the incident. That was one of the things I liked about Jessica Jones. She lives in a world that happens after Avengers. Yes. She lives in a world where there would be world. Yeah. She would live in a world where, yeah, if you had superpowers and pe- normal people learned about that, oh, they'd be racist as shit. Uh-huh. Although it wouldn't be racist, I don't know, powerish. Yeah. Powerist? Powerist. Yeah. I so think that now sounds about right. Yeah. So now we're seeing New York from the eyes of a teenager who grew up with Iron Man and with the Avengers and shit, you know? Uh Uh-huh. We haven't really seen much of that before. Basically, one of the main reasons why I like Spider-Man Homecoming is the same reason why I liked the 
the second Purge movie. <laughs> okay. Like, the first Purge film is a great film, but it's all set in one freaking house. Yeah. And I'm like, great, we're seeing how one family deals with the Purge. You know what I would like to see? How a nation deals with this. Uh-huh. And that's what Spider-Man Homecoming is. Oh, yeah, no, this is this is this is how New York deals with superheroes. This is how you would be growing up idolizing Iron Man and Thor and all this shit. Uh-huh. And the Avengers, and you would want to be on the Avengers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It makes sense for that to be a life goal. Yeah. Now, here's something I, that that is less of something I like about the movie and more of a shower thought. I find this to be fascinating. We've seen a number of different Spider-Mans. Tobey Maguire, Andrew Ziggy, and now a young British Tom Amsterdam, Tom Holland. Yeah. I, I was close. I was in the ballpark. Three different people played the same character, but each person played it completely differently. Yes. Like you can't get, you cannot get Toby Maguire's Peter Parker and Tom Holland's Peter Parker and say, these are the same person. No, not at all. And I'm blown away by that. I'm still not sure how to treat, um, uh, Andrew family circuses, Peter Parker. Yeah. I just, I, I choose to ignore it. That's that's how I choose to handle that one. My brother, Joe, when he first saw The Amazing Spider-Man, the first thing he said was, uh, the first thing he like Facebooked or tweeted or whatever, he said, I was so blown away by this new Spider-Man movie. Once I go home, I'm burning all of my other Spider-Man DVDs. Okay. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, number one, I don't think DVDs burn that way, especially like Blu-rays. They might survive that. They'll still be playable, but that's beside the point. <laughs> Number two, eventually they're going to be rebooting this, and you're just going to be, what, spend the rest of your life burning Spider-Mans? <laughs> like, you've, you've chosen a bad goal for yourself, sir. <laughs> but it is a goal, okay? So, mm -hmm. you know. A little credit for that. When Spider-Man Homecoming came out, I kept a good watchful eye on my brother's like Facebook page to see if, ooh, you're going to be burning Andrew Garfield next? <laughs> but Tobey Maguire is more like, I'm a 20-something in New York. I am getting my own place and trying to become an adult. Yeah. You know? I, I still like Tobey Maguire. I, I, I... I only saw the third one once. The second one was really good. The Green Goblin. Oh, yeah. eh. I saw I, I saw the third one, I think, two or three times, but yeah. not a lot. Like I saw I saw the first and second one a shit ton of times. Yeah, but that first one, but that third one, I think I only saw like maybe twice. Yeah, I've only seen it. But Toby, once. I haven't gone back. Yeah, but Tobey Maguire is more like a young, stylish, 20-something Peter Parker. Andrew Charlie Brown well, he's, is... he's really Parker. a lot more of the of the Peter Parker that most of us read. Yes. Is, is really yeah. the Tobey Maguire one. You know, yeah. he, 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 he was maybe in college, you know. He was working as a photographer, things like that. You know, that's that's the Spider-Man that the TV shows were centered around. Yeah. And then cartoons most people, and stuff. Yeah, that most people remember. Yeah. But Andrew Gazorpazorpfield. But this is the Spider-Man as Spider-Man always should have been. Yes. Yeah. But then Andrew Gazorpazorp Field is younger, but still he's an older guy and it just feels weird. Yeah. Plus he his his American accent isn't one hundred percent set in stone. 
And I really like The Amazing Spider-Man, too, because literally he goes from being like, I'll always remember my Uncle Ben, to, uh, hey, Ma, come on, I'm from New York, hey! <laughs> but this new guy, Tom Holland, he just is. Mm-hmm. He just is Peter Parker. Yeah, I agree. He just, he just does such a great freaking job. And also, you know, I got the I got the the Blu-ray with all the special editions and all that sort of yada yada. Um, there's also the fact that he can do a perfect standing backflip. Really nice. Yeah, he he was a, a dancer and a gymnast and he has a very physical background and so he's able to just do a lot of this shit on his own. Nice. Also which, which point certainly of helps order, reasonable reason uh, yeah, believability. <laughs> yeah. Also point of order I will not be doing the history of Spider-Man. This is one of the most iconic characters in the history of everything. <laughs> I don't need to discuss Spider-Man's fucking history. I also, we've done Marvel movies before and I've done uh, the history of Marvel. So I have inadvertently done the history of Spider-Man before. And I feel like it would just be like a repeat. Yeah. But I'll open the door for you, Eleanor. I'll open the door. Daddy's a hero. Just remember how much of a hero daddy is. Here you go. Here you go. Yeah. It's help. It helps to be able to reach things. I will say this, though, about the history of Spider-Man. Uh -huh. um, Bunny. Yes. Have you ever seen Japanese Spider-Man? Didn't we do Japanese Spider-Man? I think we did we do the first episode. I know we have talked about it before, but I'm not sure if we did it. Again, we need a historian. Yeah. We, we did the two Turkish movies. Yes. Maybe maybe Spider Man was in one of those that I'm getting. Yeah, wasn't Spider Man a bad guy in one of those? Yeah, he was green and he was a bad guy. But yeah. Japanese Spider Man was a TV show in like I I believe the seventies. And it's really good. Out of all of the Spider Mans out there, out of all, all the different itinerations of Spider Man that has existed, the Japanese Spider Man TV show is the most um loyal to the source material okay because everyone knows the story of peter parker peter parker was a 30 something famous professional motorcycle rider who was given his powers via a magical bracelet given to him by aliens which allows him to not only magically transform into the mystical hero known as Spider-Man, but also gives him control of a giant robot named Leo Pardon that he uses to fight evil aliens. I, and that I, is I, the story of Peter yeah. Parker. I, I, that was the Alan Moore run, wasn't it? Oh yeah, that was great. Yeah. That was awesome. Yeah, so it's always weird to see these Spider-Man movies where it's like, oh, hey, he's going to be in high school and have an Aunt May. No, Peter Parker is a Japanese race car driver who is fighting an evil being known as Marveler, the Marveler. <laughs> and he lives in a cave in space. <laughs> and he sends giant monsters that Spider-Man must battle using his giant robot, Leo Pardon. <laughs> It's very accurate to the comic books if the comic books were uh, done by a crazy person. <laughs> anyway, they're worth a watch. They're really wonderful. Yeah. So there are more things that I like about this film. Number one. Well, number like 12. I, I'm going to stop counting. Um, Peter Parker's friend Ned is in, in fact uh, Miles Morales Spider-Man's uh, overweight Asian friend Ganky, and I really like. I I I read all of the Miles Morales Spider-Man comic books. Uh, he, he and I just loved the fact that uh, this young, half black, half Mexican Spider-Man, living in New York and struggling with his family life, had a nerdy, overweight Asian friend named Genki. 
who was always a smart ass and helped him to be a superhero. Uh-huh. And so I was really excited to see like, oh my God, in this comic book, in this movie, Spider-Man Homecoming, that's Genki right there. But they called him Ned. And I'm still a little bit pissed about that. But yeah, uh, that is actually Ultimate Spider-Man's best friend, Genki. And speaking of Ultimate Spider-Man. Okay, so let's talk about Miles Morales. Okay. Okay. Um, there, there was a time when people were like, oh, they're going to reboot Spider-Man. They're going to replace Tobey Maguire with someone else. We, who should we reboot it, reboot Spider-Man with? And there were a number of different people saying a number of different things. And then someone had the idea of, hey, why can't we just have a black Spider-Man? Let's have a black Spider-Man. Let's have Spider-Man be black. You know what? The young guy from Community, Donald Glover, he would make an excellent Spider-Man. So there was a there was a, a movement, and there was a, a, a Twitter campaign, yeah. and there were campaigns all over the internet to try and get Marvel and Sony to agree to have Donald Glover be Spider-Man. Donald Glover needs to be Spider-Man, and um, eventually down the road, and I think it was from those big Sony hacks, but eventually down the road, it, there was like the Spider-Man Bible and it was the rules that Sony has specifically in place that have to happen in a Spider-Man movie. Spider-Man needs to be this. Spider-Man needs to be that. Spider-Man can't do this. Spider-Man can't kill anyone. Spider-Man can't cause. And Spider-Man has to be white. Uh-huh. And a, Spider-Man has to be a white male was, okay. was a rule set in place by Sony. And so people got really pissed. And Donald Glover was always happy about that. Like, like, thanks. You know, he, he, I, I appreciate your your fandom, but it looks like it's not going to happen. There's just not going to be a black Spider-Man. And looking so, and looking at him in this movie, he's getting a little old for the part. Yeah. Back in the day when mm-hmm. the campaign first happened, he would have been perfect at that age. At that like second or third season of Community, it would have been a perfect time for him to be Spider-Man, but just he got too old and he can't do it now. Yeah. But there was a time when he would have been perfect. I have a song of his, of Donald Glover as Childish Gambino, and one of the lines he says that always makes me smile is, you couldn't see me as Spider-Man, now I'm spitting venom. <laughs> It's just every time that line comes on, I'm like, yes, yes, yes. And then eventually in the in the Disney has always really been loosey goosey with their Marvel animation shows. And they decided to have one where Spider-Man seeks help from a number of different Spider-Men in a number of different dimensions. And so he goes to a dimension and meets Miles Morales. Oh, but I'm getting beside myself. So, so Donald Glover is like, thanks, but it's not going to happen. There's just not a black Spider-Man. So then Brian Michael Bendis says, well, why can't we do this? So he went to the ultimate universe, which was like the side universe, like the modern day retelling of the Marvel movies, killed off Peter Parker and replaced him with a young, half black, half African-American guy named Miles Morales who looked an awful lot like Donald Glover. So Donald Glover inspired an actual black Spider-Man. Nice. And he became super popular. And then they had him appear in this new Spider-Man animated show on the Disney Channel where Spider-Man would get help from other... Is that the phone? Yeah, it's Genie's phone. Oh, Genie's phone. Okay. I, I thought for a second you were playing like a... It sounds like one of Eleanor's toys. <laughs> Weird. I thought you were playing a, a kid's piano for a second. Like you're, like, are you Schrodering me? It it could happen. Yeah, it could. So, so they had the animated Spider-Man meet and team up with Miles Morales in the animated show, and they got Donald Glover to do the voice. And now to this day, if you ever see Miles Morales in an animated cartoon, it's it's Donald Glover doing the voice. And that's awesome. Nice. And that means a lot. And so nowadays there is a black Spider-Man and they could have Donald Glover technically show up. But now he's too old. Mm-hmm. But here's here's the best part in the Miles Morales origin story. Miles Morales' dad doesn't like him hanging out with his uncle, Aaron, 
because his uncle Aaron is a criminal and he had a record and he was with all these gangs and he would rob people and back in like the 70s he was secretly a supervillain called the prowler uh-huh okay so uh uncle aaron finds out that his nephew miles is spider-man and uses him and he's like hey so your dad would like kill you if he found out you were spider-man right you haven't told your dad great you're gonna help me out because i know where all the criminals in town are i'm gonna tell you where they are and we're gonna bust them together and really (laughs) all aaron is doing is using uh spider-man to take out all of the competition in the gang world yeah and so you have no idea. So now, uh, Donald Glover is too old to be Miles Morales. So you have no idea how much it means to have Donald Glover show up in this week's movie, Spider Man Homecoming, as a criminal named Aaron. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. And he says to to peter parker they have this that that wonderful back and forth in the garage where they're fighting against each other but i imagine this would happen in new york and probably with any other city out there where they're fighting against each other and they're arguing against each other but then uh spider-man mentions a deli yeah and then donald glover's like oh you know that place yeah, and then suddenly they're not fighting against each other. They're just talking about the neighborhood. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, this place is better. Oh, but they use too much bread. Oh, well, I like bread. <laughs> and so, like, I was thinking about that. And so, yeah, like, I imagine, like, I'm I'm arguing passionately against this, like, angry redneck guy. And he hates Mexicans and he wants me to go back to my country. And I hate this guy because he's an idiot. But if in the middle of the conversation, he mentions Peter Piper pizza. Yeah. Oh, my God. That guy would become my best friend. (laughs) So then that got me to thinking more. So the next time this will help you possibly get a beating or maybe even save your life. The next time you're having a a heated argument with a right winger or a Republican or a Christian or a white supremacist. Next time you're arguing at someone massively passionately in the middle of it, try and steer the conversation to the best fast food French fries. Uh Uh-huh. That's a good idea. Because I think that would work. If you're getting into this massive heated conversation with someone and you guys are literally like nose to nose, like the rock and stone cold i think that literally you can say yeah you want to beat my ass well let me tell you something what are your thoughts on fast food french fries sure wendy's is good but if you don't dunk them in the shake then they taste like crap your thoughts (laughs) you know you can just steer the entire conversation yes yeah chick-fil-a has good ones i forgot about them because they're not in the regular fry shape they are waffle shaped but you're right they are damn good I don't. I don't like the Wendy's fries. They're way I don't too like the thick. Wendy's fries either. Yeah. Yeah. But but they're arguing. Donald Glover and Peter Parker, and then Donald Glover says, "You know what? Um, I don't like the weapons these guys are sending. I've got a nephew in this neighborhood." Uh huh. Okay. That's setting up a Miles Morales. Yeah. That's setting up a second Black Spider-Man. In fact, I got the Blu-ray DVD, and it features extended scenes, and it features a a, a wonderful extended scene of the film that Peter Parker does in the beginning of the movie. Oh, that was great. Where he finishes the, the, the fight in Captain America Civil War, and he's talking about it in the hotel, and then Happy says, like, go to bed. But then he puts his Spider-Man suit back on, and he says, you know what? I'm just going to take a little walk around the neighborhood. So he opens the windows to his hotel and he starts uh, swinging and webbing and running and whatever from rooftop to rooftop. Next thing you know, he ends up in a rooftop party. Yes. 
Uh-huh. And there's hundreds of like drunk people partying with him and taking selfies with him. And he's getting girls and like taking them on like swings, you know, uh-huh. around the neighborhood. And everyone's loving it. And then it cuts to the next morning and he's in the hotel lobby eating breakfast and Happy's there all pissed. So did you have a fun time swinging last night? And Peter's like, what are you talking about? I, you know, I just went for a little walk around the neighborhood. And then Happy holds up the paper that's there at the free breakfast buffet. And Peter goes, I don't speak German. <laughs> and Happy goes, it says, Sticky Boy Saves Chancellor. <laughs> oh, that guy was the Chancellor? He was really nice. Well, hey, it's not like they have a picture or anything. And then he turns the paper over. Oh, my God, they do have a picture. Can I keep that? <laughs> It's really awesome. But then they have an extended scene after Peter, after Spider-Man leaves Donald Glover webbed to the car. Yeah. And it just goes on for a really long time. And he's just stuck there and he's yelling for help. Hello? Is anybody there? So then with his free hand, he reaches into his pants to get the keys to his car and he accidentally like it flies out of his hand and so it's just past his reach so he's doing like the splits trying to grab the keys with his shoe yeah then an old woman comes by and he's like hello can you help me can you help me i am a human being in need of help ma'am and finally he has the keys and he's trying to use the keys to like saw off the webbing and it's not working it's just man i hate this dude and then he eventually he like gives up and although he's still stuck to the car he's like laying down on the floor on the phone and he goes yeah no hey, uh, no just sorry miles i'm not gonna make it yeah i'm 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 a bit stuck <laughs> so they're setting up for the possibility of Miles Morales, Spider-Man, to be in this cinematic universe, and I'm really freaking excited about that. I, I I would like to see it. I would like to see something different out of Spider-Man. Yeah, and there is a lot, there is a lot of difference in here. Now, this next part might be a trigger to any Republicans out there, any white Republican Christians out there. This is the most culturally diverse Spider-Man I've ever seen. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Spider-Man's best friend is a fat, possibly gay Asian kid. Yeah. His, uh, 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 Spider-Man's love interest, Liz, is black. Mary Jane is black, and I freaking love her. Yeah, yeah. She didn't really put out a Mary Jane vibe. She you know? didn't put on a Mary Jane vibe, but I fell in love with her way in this movie way before I knew she was Mary Jane. Oh yeah, it's just because she was such a oh, like she was the outcast. She was an outcast yeah. of outcasts. Yeah, you know what are you doing here? You don't even have detention. I know. I just like sketching people in crisis. Yes. <laughs> Here, look, I drew you. Mm -hmm. And then, my favorite, Flash Thompson. Yeah. Flash freaking Thompson. The bully, the angry, pissed off bully. They made him a short, skinny Indian guy. Yes. But they also made him better competition for Peter. Yeah. You yeah. know, like, like before he was just stupid. Right. He was a stupid jock and well, jocks hate nerds and just, there's nothing. This it's, it's too cookie cutter, you know, Yeah, where here he is much more a competitor with Peter. Yeah. So there's more, yeah. there's, more of a reason for a rivalry. Yeah. There's also the fact that the guy, the specific actor that they got to play Flash Thompson was Zero from the Grand Budapest Hotel. Okay. I had and I love that. the movie. Oh, it's a great movie. It's yeah. a great movie. It's, it's, it's one of the better Wes Anderson films. Uh-huh. Okay. Out there. 
I would say it's it's one of the best, if not the best. Really like the Grand Budapest Hotel. But just the, the kid in the middle of this movie, just this little orphan boy who they call Zero, because he has zero experience. Okay. So he's Zero. Oh, he's just amazing in this. He's amazing in that movie. And now, like, oh, just the the... The diversity of we're going to get this young, small Indian and make him bully Flash Thompson. Like, damn good. Good for this movie. Yeah. You know, damn Mm -hmm. good for this movie. There's also the fact that Peter Parker has a robot AI in his suit named Karen. Yeah. That he names Karen. And that's voiced by Jennifer Connelly. Okay. Who is married to Paul Bettany, who voiced Jarvis. Yes. Nice. So so Peter Parker's robot AI is voiced by the woman who is married to Jarvis. (laughs) And there's also the fact that she was in Hulk, but I try and forget that movie. Which, the very first one? Yeah, Ang Lee's Hulk. Yeah, yeah. I try and forget that film. Like, you tried. Good for you. You tried something different, but it just didn't work. Also, I love this Aunt May. Oh, she is still good looking. Yeah, she is. Mm -hmm. She is very much good looking. Although I do like the first Spider-Man where uh, 98-year-old Aunt May just wants a free toaster from Jeff Winger from Community. <laughs> and Jeff Winger's like, excuse me, we don't give out toasters. I'm Jeff Winger. I'm going to be going to Greendale Community College. <laughs> but I like, but I, I just love this Aunt May. I like her a lot. And and um, without giving out the absolute end of the film, I am excited with the ending to this film. Yes. Like the ending to the film made me more excited than any other part of the film. I, yeah. Uh huh. I got, I got to, yeah, I got to agree with that. Yeah. Like there was a lot to like about this film, but that last, what the, f- he just, <laughs> Oh my God. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> she would know. Also, she would know. Yeah. There's yeah. only, there's only so long you're going to fool her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's also one other great little thing that I loved about this film is that when I was little, I went out of my way to track down weird comics. Yeah. And bizarre yeah. comics and different comics. And I would read Marvel's What the? Uh huh. And old issues of Not Brand Ech from the 60s and 70s. And I would look for bizarre things. Like, they had this bizarre artist named Fred Hembeck. Uh-huh. And, and he drew a comic strip. He drew a comic, Fred Hembeck Kills the Entire Marvel Universe. <laughs> and he just killed everyone. And was, was he really the, stupid and violent. Was he the one who always drew the characters with the swirly knees? Yes, yes, okay. yes. That is exactly him that is exactly him so they would also occasionally have like because it was the 70s roast comic books okay and they they had one and it was it was the the marvel roast of the fantastic four okay and the fantastic four four had been around for so long that all of the superheroes came to roast them (laughs) <laughs> and I remember the only part that I remember is the fact that um, the X Men show up and they're really mean and they're really like like giving it to the Fantastic Four and just making fun of them and being like super cruel. And then finally, like the the Johnny Storm stands up and it's like, guys, you're just being you're going way too far. I, I can't believe this. I am so upset. How could you make fun of us like that? And then suddenly. Cyclops is just looking around, like grabbing his head. Oh my! Oh my goodness! What happened? I'm sorry, guys. Magneto must have been mind controlling us. <laughs> it's like, oh, that's that's, a, that's okay then. Uh, but anyway, thank you for leaving. And it's not until they leave that they're like, "Wait, what the heck? Magneto can't mind control people. Get back here!" <laughs> 
So I would read these like weird, strange comics, and then I saw this one comic, and I had every issue, and I just loved it because in the same way that I like this Spider-Man movie, I just like the realism of it. And I would imagine that with all the battles, that just nobody would live in New York. Like, uh-huh. what is New York now that aliens have shown up and, and destroyed people? And then in the comic book, something horrible is happening in New York every three months. So you would imagine that people would just move, you know? Mm-hmm. So I liked the fact that they made a comic book where it was a, a business organization that you would hire if there was something messy that you, you needed to clean up. And that was a comic book called Damage Control. Yes, I, I think I have a couple of issues still. Yeah, and I absolutely loved that. And Spider-Man Homecoming has damage control. Yes. I loved that, and I got super excited. got super excited for that. That that sets up a lot. This film sets up a lot. Like, mm-hmm. the ending leaves a lot of unanswered questions. Like, uh, I'm excited to see Peter Parker and his uh, dynamic slash relationship with Aunt May. Uh-huh. There is now a person in prison that knows Peter Parker's identity. The Tinker is still loose. That's a big ass name in the comics. Yeah. He can basically create supervillains. Um plus MJ, there's a big plane crash and in that plane was all of the Avengers high tech crap. So there's some secret super high tech stuff that's out there. Yeah. Like I'm excited to see what happens after this in this Marvel world that they've created. Mm-hmm. You know? And it's Sony, so what exactly is, how is this going to play in the, uh, what? I don't know. I The Kelvin timeline. I, I, yeah. I, I'm getting confused now. <laughs> All I know is that um, Peter Parker is in Avengers 3 and Avengers 4, and then after that, the next Spider-Man movie will take place after Avengers 4. Okay. So, Avengers 3 comes out summer 2018. Avengers 4 comes out summer 2019, because they're filming those back-to-back. And then I believe the next Spider-Man comes out at the end of 2019. And it will be Not after the bad. Yeah. Yeah. So not that long. They definitely have like a plan and all that crap. But a very good movie. And, and I did like him filming himself from Civil War. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Under- There's one- hey, gotta go. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to be breaking down the plot for this because it's just it's a super. I, I I just don't feel it's one hundred percent necessary, but it's a wonderful movie and everyone should watch it. And also, one thing I wanted to mention before we leave, uh, Der Spiedermann, which I believe is his name in Germany, but I'm also probably one hundred percent wrong. I wanted to give a shout out to my absolute favorite. Facebook group. Okay. I think you would get a kick out of this Facebook group. Big, big fans of this group. I'm not even sure how I found the group. I don't know. I think the group may have just magically appeared in my feed one day. Maybe Facebook just listened to me. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Facebook is listening to my conversations. Oh, but yeah. it's a group called Spider Man Shit Slinging. Okay, nice. And it's it's a public group with uh, 1.5K members, and the entire thing is dedicated to making fun of the first three Spider-Man movies. Okay. Oh, it's so great. It is so good. They, they make fun of the, the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man. That's the entire thing. Yeah. The fucking Green Goblin was awful. Yeah. (laughs) But um, they were going to make a Spider-Man 4, and it was going to feature the Vulture, and they were going to get John Malkovich. I could kind of see that, although I think Michael Keaton did a great job. 
Oh, he did a great what job. What a fucked up career trajectory his has taken, man. Yeah. You know? Yeah. He played what? Batman and then he played Birdman. Birdman. As as uh, almost satirically from Batman. And then he's fucking Birdman. Yeah. But one of the things that I like about his character is is that and I think this is one of the reasons why he agreed to be in this part in this role is that he's not really a bad guy because everything he's doing, he's doing for the right reasons. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. he's not it, it kind of the same thing with like Wilson Fisk in the Daredevil series is that, yeah, he's doing horrible things for the right reasons. Yes. Like, yeah, he's killing people, and that's bad, but what is his major crime? Trying to make the, the neighborhood better? Ooh. Mm-hmm. Daredevil's trying to beat the kingpin so that Hell's Kitchen can stay shitty. <laughs> How dare you try and gentrify the neighborhood with uh, nicer apartments and high-scale restaurants? We want this. We want Hell's Kitchen to stay crappy. <laughs> <laughs> you know that's, that's basically it yeah yeah so basically the vulture is like just this normal guy who gets fired for no reason and it's either you know it build something out of this alien technology or lose my wife and kids in the house like damn i i would have been the vulture yeah mm-hmm yeah, the vulture. Done. He he was he was a very good character. He was a character that you can understand, which is always yeah. always the best bad guys. If you could like see where yeah. he is coming from, you yeah. know, and he was very clear to see where he was coming from, and he just wanted a nice ordinary life, as opposed to trying to rule the world or whatever. Yeah, yeah, he had a. He had more realistic reasons for being a bad guy. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I really think that you would like this Spider-Man shit slinging Facebook group. But <laughs> just tell me, just tell me, Bunny, that you'll give me a chance. I will give you a chance. What about my uncle? Did you give him a chance? <laughs> Did you? <laughs> <laughs> that one's for the group right there that one's for the group yeah another thing that the group is focused on this took me a while this took me a while to to figure out but um spider the first toby mcguire spider-man that was the first game the first superhero game where it's just here you be spider-man here is new york you can swing wherever you want uh-huh and do whatever you want. There's a plot, but also you can just fucking swing <laughs> throughout all of New York and do whatever the hell you want. We've hidden things. You want to find those? That's fine. So then when Spider-Man 2, the video game, came out, like we had it for the PlayStation 2, and it, most of the time we wouldn't play the actual game. We would just be helping people, and there were all these tiny things you could do. Like occasionally you would hear my balloon because a little girl had lost her balloon and you have to try and grab it and give it back to her yeah before the girl walks away and you'd be stopping like purse snatchers and and cars that are getting robbed but then there was a weird mini game where you go to the pizza place where the daily show correspondent owns the place Uh uh-huh that that uh the middle eastern guy Mr. Yeah. Aziz, I believe is his name. And so Peter in the movie, Peter Parker is a pizza delivery guy, but he sucks. So he ends up being Spider-Man to deliver the pizzas. So you in the game, you start delivering pizzas to people in New York and you have a time limit. Uh-huh. You've got to get okay. across. You've got to get across New York as Spider-Man and deliver these pizzas in under a minute. <laughs> But when you would play that, when you would play those pizza delivering mini games, the music of the soundtrack would change to the most 
generic and vaguely racist Italian music imaginable. <laughs> like the Tarantella? <laughs> yeah. So what the people in the group sometimes like to do is get classic scenes of all of the Spider-Man movies and add this shitty music to it. (laughs) My favorite one was when they got Gwen Stacy dying in Amazing Spider-Man 2 and you see her slowly dying and her like neck snapping to do 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 snap it's really great it's really great I love this group and I've been excited to talk about Spider-Man so I can talk about my wonderful group that just spits on Toby Maguire. Like I set my phone to give me a notification when anyone posts something. So I'll be at work and I'll be like, oh God, I got 184 boxes. This, this is horrible. Ooh, what's that notification? Did uh Natasha text me? Oh no, someone posted in Spider-Man shit slinging. <laughs> Someone posted the other day uh, uh, from the first Spider-Man movie, roses are red, violets are blue. What about my uncle? Did you give him a chance? Did you? <laughs> oh, and a lot of Bonesaw McGraw. There's a lot of Bonesaw McGraw in that, Oh, there too. would have to be. Yeah. Bonesaw is ready. <laughs> really weird. What do you think is the weirdest wrestler appearance in a movie? What do you think is weirder? Um... Macho Man Randy Savage as a wrestler in the Spider-Man movie or Kevin Nash as a sexy stripper in the Magic Mike series. I was going to go Kevin Nash in um in a uh, Rock of Ages. Oh yeah, I forgot. Yeah, it was a bouncer. Yeah. That's weird. That's weird. Or Kevin Nash he- in the in the original Punisher. Well, not yeah. the original Punisher. Yeah. That yeah. would be Dolph Lundgren. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, Kevin Nash was also the person in the shredder suit in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 Secrets of the Ooze. Ah. That's the one that featured Vanilla Ice doing the ninja rap. Yes. Pretty sure that em- there's a good chance that Emerald still knows all the lines to the ninja rap. <laughs> but that's Deanna's fault, it's not Emerald's fault gonna have to find out <laughs> yeah i am definitely gonna find out i'm gonna go into a room ninja ninja in fact hold on a second uh pizza crust on the floor that's great uh hey i was just thinking about when you were littler and I thought that maybe if you wanted to, we could sing a song together that you remember from your childhood. Don't give me that face. But this is a really good song that you loved when you were younger. I know that. And I'm not going to sing it. But maybe you'll want to sing it, really? No, I don't. Well, let's try it out. This is a great song. No, I'm good. And you'll probably know the lyrics. No, you might not know what it is. Let's sing it together. Ninja, ninja, rap. Ninja, oh. ninja, rap. That's not what I thought it was. Go, ninja, go, ninja, go. Go, ninja, <laughs> go, ninja, go. Well, you're bobbing your head. Like, what song did you think I was going to say? Um, this is your dead set that I was going to say. Um, sing, start one, singing. Everybody has a butt. Oh, everybody has a butt? Oh, the butt song. I love the butt song. Yeah. No, I'm talking about the ninja yeah. rap, Vanilla Ice. Do you remember the lyrics that you rewrote for Jesus? No? You and Deanna are going to sing the Jesus rap at... at Jesus. Jesus. Yeah, exactly. The Jesus rap. You rewrote the entire... You and Deanna rewrote the entire like song for Jesus. I don't like that. You were going to sing it at church. At the Korean church we used to go to. With the sticky noodles. <laughs> and all the angry Korean people. Oh, we're going to have to rem- figure out the lyrics to the Jesus rap, Emerald. She remembered. Let's see. <laughs> That's all I've got on Spider Man. It's a di- it's it's a damn good movie, and I love it. And it's, it's great. A, it's a damn good movie. I love it too. Everybody yeah, must see it's it. It's good to see. 
you know, it's good to see a young Peter Parker again. In fact, um, in 2013, Tom Holland, who was literally a teenager at the time, he was like uh, 14, 15, 16, 17, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19. He, I, I believe he was 15 or 16 years old at the time. Uh-huh. I believe he was 16 years old at the time. He was doing a red carpet premiere for his new movie that no one saw, some art film. It was 2013, and Empire Magazine, the British entertainment magazine, went up to Tom Holland and, and said, what is your dream job? What, what, what would you like to do next? And he said, oh, what would I like to do? Well, I guess whenever uh, Marvel fires Andrew Garfield, I guess I'd want to do Peter Parker. I guess I'm kind of too young now to be Peter Parker. But like eventually, yeah. if they ever reboot the reboot, I would want to be the Spider-Man after Andrew Garfield. Cool. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So who is so like it's really it's pretty awesome that years and years afterwards they're they're like, yeah, how about this guy? Yeah. Yeah. So I love this movie. It's it's damn good. And here's the important part. Here's the important part. I tried to show Man of Steel to Maxwell. Okay. And he said he said, Daddy, that's not Superman. <laughs> He like left halfway through the movie. Like, Daddy, that's not Superman. And I'm like, Maxwell, that's probably the best review anyone will ever give for this film. Yes. And I'm like, Maxwell, this movie you'll like. It's Batman and it's Superman, and they're fighting against each other. And it's the first time that they'll ever that they ever appeared in a film together. And Wonder Woman's in it. You're gonna love it. And then like 20 minutes later, he's like, Dad, can I play games on your phone? And I'm like, okay, that's also another really good review. And, and that's how we both felt about that movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But this film, he was just, and it's like two hours and 20 minutes, but he was on the edge of his seat the entire time, and he understood it, and he loved it, and it was great. He loved this Spider-Man movie, and he's six. So to get him to sit down and watch a two-hour and 20-minute anything is pretty damn impressive. It like was it was just a fun ride. Yeah. And that's the sort of thing that I'm trying to go for in this week's uh in this month's November palette cleanser. Stuff that we won't have to think too hard about. No. Now next week will be a challenge. Because next week we're doing the fucking Dark Tower movie. Okay. That's gonna be now, hard. Here, Yes, well, it, it's a it's a theory that I'm working on, and I mentioned this before, and I will mention it again. The worst review of the Ender's Game movie that I read said, because most movie reviewers, if you're a movie reviewer, you're pretty intelligent, you went to college, you have a degree, and more than likely, you have read Ender's Game. Right. But this one movie reviewer said, I never read Ender's Game. I went into this movie and I saw what the plot was. I read the Wikipedia page and still I sat down and I watched this movie and I had no idea what the hell was happening. I have no idea what this movie was about. I was completely lost. The only way you can understand this movie at all is if you had read the books. Mm hmm. And I thought that's a horrible review because it should be that you watch a movie and you understand it and you understand what's happening. And I read the first Dark Tower book and I tried reading the second one and gave up. And that was like eight years ago, a decade ago, maybe. Yeah. And so I'm interested to see this first Dark Tower film because as far as I can tell from the previews, none of what I read in the first Dark Tower book is in this film. There's this little kid in New York and a portal and uh, all right, all right, all right. Like, I have no idea what the fuck's going on in this movie. All right. <laughs> so I'm interested to see this film and see if I understand it because I haven't read all of the Dark Towers. And as far as I can tell, this film is like an amalgam of a bunch of different Dark Tower books. Mm hmm. So am I going to be able to understand this film without having to, like, wikipedia up the ass 
I, I'm wondering if I'm going to be able to understand this book, having this movie, having read all the books. Yeah. Yeah. So this, this will be interesting. This will be interesting. Yeah. I'm excited to see this film to see if I understand it or give a shit about it. I'm pretty sure I'm going to hate it. And movies that I, that I hate seem to be better episodes. So this will be, yeah. And, and the one thing that really concerns me is that in any of the previews I've seen, well, first, all the previews I've seen suck. Okay. Yes. But they're not showing a lot of Roland Gunslinger Flash. You know? Yeah. They they show yeah. a little, but you know, have you ever seen Equilibrium? Yes, I believe so. That was some good gun work in a yeah. movie. So so yeah. like they have to beat that for a movie titled The Gunslinger. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I don't think they're beating that. <clears throat> I'm afraid they're not going to be beating that, no. Yeah. So next week, we will be watching The Dark Tower and probably shitting all over it. Next week also, for homework, it's a music playlist on my Wikipedia page, on my YouTube page. Reverend Steve G. It's called TPOF EP148 Music Playlist. Next week, we also have a new Steve's Historical Approximations, which is a real weird one. A real weird one. Okay. I'm trying to, I'm trying to go to a different place with this one. Uh, uh, a, a place that you would norm, normally not expect. Yes. So this is definitely different, and I'm excited about that. It's going to be a surprise to people next week. So I, I, I think next week is going to be a pretty damn good episode. And I'm pretty excited for next week yeah. to happen. But now that I'm at the end of this episode, and I'm looking back at, you know, our successes and our failures, really looking back at the whole, the whole thing, the whole Ancelotta. delicate tapestry. was. Yeah. Now that I'm looking back at everything, I got to say, um, I think it's been a pretty damn good episode. I think it's been a damn good episode. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 So until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend Steve saying thanks for listening. And we will see you next week, you godless heathens. And your douche waffles and poopy test. You scared the crap out of me. <laughs> You scared the crap out of me. I did not expect you. I didn't expect you to barge in here, especially since it's like an hour past your bedtime. I'm sorry. Hint, I'm hint, you need to get to bed. Okay, well, you need to get to bed, and you okay. scared the crap out of me. And I'm all Jessica Jones up right now, so you, you like sneaking up on me is not a good thing, is what I'm saying. Okay? I might tase you. <laughs> it won't be my fault. It'll be your fault because no one should ever sneak up on me. It's a trigger for me. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm gonna chloroform you. <laughs> uh, also, side note, I need to buy chloroform. Well, okay. I need to buy more chloroform. Do 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 do